Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Monsignor, for having me uh, here today. I'll focus on the five, six things that universities do and how and why they should do things differently in this era of the existential crisis we are facing as humanity in so many fronts. But before I do that, I just wanted to give you a snapshot view of what my organization, UNITAR, does and how it interfaces with universities. We are the training arm of the United Nations, and uh, I work essentially with public policy officials in 92 most distressed countries. Half the membership of the United Nations is severely distressed. They're either in conflict, coming out of conflict, or they're economically distressed, socially distressed. Remotely, uh, their remoteness is a stress on them. So we work essentially in these 92 countries with public policy officials, and we reach about 85,000 people every year with training outcomes which have a learning and, uh, outcome and content to them. But while I'm proud to give this statistic, I must say that I often wonder, after we have done these training programs for public policy officials in many of these distressed countries, I wonder if these guys go back to their workspace, switch on their computers, and do they do things any differently than from before they did that training? And what I realized uh, in the years I've been with UNITAR, this is my fourth year, is that adults and adult learning, attitudinal and behavioral shifts are probably the most difficult thing in the world. And it, it's a real struggle to get the time, kinds of attitudinal and behavioral shifts that we need to get to where we want to, to realize the 2030 agenda. And that's our biggest, biggest challenge. We keep talking about reaching the furthest first of new paradigms in development. We talk of new approaches, but those guys who have to make the decisions that will make it happen are the least responsive to change. The second thing uh, is the symposium, of course, is great. Uh, we have 100 people here. But what is the scale that we want to reach if we are to get to the 2030 agenda? Is it in the thousands? Is it in the tens of thousands? Is it in the hundreds of thousands? I think it's in the millions. And how do we get to those millions to bring about the change. So our challenge in UNITAR is to build capacity in, of, of course, uh, given the SDGs, it's would be no surprise to all of you to know that we have divisions on peace, planet, people, and prosperity. We do everything in partnership. We have a diplomatic training uh, program, and we have a satellite applications program. So we have very diverse programming. So I'm talking to you about the challenges I face and how difficult it is to change people's mindsets. But let me then turn to universities. As a result of all this, because we have a research component, and our research is essentially on the pedagogy and methodology of learning, what powers learning for our younger generations? How do they learn? Why is the way we learned by reading books and listening to long, boring lectures, why is that no longer the way younger people learn? Why do they want knowledge and information to come to them in little sound bites? Why is it that they enjoy gamification more than doing turgid uh, online courses and tests? That's what we have to grapple with, and that's the challenge we face. Now, in this kind of research and, of course, in learning, we uh, work a lot with universities, universities in North America, universities in Southern America, Latin America, in China, Asia, and Africa. And uh, universities, the first thing I want to say is universities are centers of learning. And the message of the SDGs was that I'm putting it a little crudely, but many universities are stodgy institutions. They are more proud of their 500-year history than they are about the changes they have implemented in the last three or four or five years to respond to human problems of today. And that's the reality. 
the silos we have in government are reflected in universities where the sciences don't necessarily talk or do anything jointly. Multidisciplinarity was the basic message of the SDGs. Do we see that multidisciplinarity, multidisciplinarity in universities today the way it should be? I think that's the first area where learning in universities for problem-solving approaches in universities should be much more multidisciplinary than they are currently to get integrated solutions to human problems. Second is universities as centers of research. Here again, the kind of research Curiosity-driven research is, of course, very important. We won't have discovered the Higgs boson particle. We need research in particle physics and what have you. But what about joint up research for human uh, problems of today? Where is, the, is there enough funding for that? Is there a rebalancing needed between curiosity-driven research and research of this type? And that's where I would urge universities to look at the kind of research that is being sponsored and to look at issues of human problems of today, whether it's in food or sustainability of agriculture or hunger or water or energy, where is the, that kind of practical research taking place? The third is universities as think tanks and uh, for governments and policymakers. And I think the uh, universities have to be much more aggressive. Certain countries, the United States, for example, has a great tradition of this interaction between government and academia. It doesn't exist in many, many countries. And I think, especially in the developing world, we need much more rigorous, uh, uh, what should I say, um, a transference of ideas from uh, academia into government and vice versa, which would enrich and cross-fertilize ideas from both things. Then universities are centers for forging partnerships with business. I think that's very important and businesses can be, uh, work much more closely with academia than they do. Uh, the last, of course, is university as role models on sustainability, and universities have to set the highest standards and serve as role models on various aspects of sustainability, including food waste policy, sustainable energy, cooperation with poorer universities. And then I come to the last point, which is linked to what I had said earlier on good global citizenship. It's easy to use the word global citizenship, but I think universities have to help forge that good global citizenship by taking the lead in helping people develop their personal agendas for good global sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much.